My grandmother was an amazing cook. Her ravioli was so good, they should make a TV show about it. Now, her cooking was old school. Tomato sauce, flour, eggs. In the future, her kitchen might have to be updated with things like lasers and liquid nitrogen. Now, kitchens haven't quite turned into labs just yet, except for one in Chicago. Here's Allie Ward. Cooking has been a developing art and science for thousands of years. From the discovery that fire could char a piece of meat to throwing weird ingredients together to make sauces. But the world of gastronomy is taking a high-tech turn inside the kitchen of executive chef Richie Farina, who combines his love of cooking with science and microgreen farming to create out-of-this-world dishes. For me, it's more about being very creative with the food, uh, having it more than being more than just food on a plate. I traveled to Chicago's famed meatpacking district to visit Richie at a restaurant called Moto. Welcome to Moto's Kitchen. Uh, let me show you one of our pride and joys being the indoor farm. <gasps> Look at this. It's After a you. plant nursery. Oh, it's so warm in here. Ah, there's so many tiny baby plants. You use all of these as microgreens. We do. Right in your dishes. Yep. Believe it or not, these right here are actually nine days old. Uh, so we go from seed to on the table in about nine days. We are able to do that because of the growing conditions inside of here. The indoor farm creates 85% of all the greens and garnishes Richie uses on his plates. Our water bath. We move to the Moto Lab, which looks like a real lab, to see how Richie uses microgreens on an appetizer like buffalo tartare. I've actually never had raw buffalo before. Just well, this, this will be a first then. I also have never had farm to table greens where the farm is on the table. And then the way it gets presented at the table is that you have your little vessel here, gets dropped out, and then a server will walk by with some tweezers and scissors. Oh my gosh, it's a perfect tiny little garden. And the taste, amazing. Okay, well I'm done here. I guess we're making more stuff though, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm having one more bite. Go for it. I'm sorry. It's really good. Next, Richie wanted to show me how he makes space-age spuds inside a vacuum chamber to go with some tasty grilled octopus. The main cool component of this will be the inflated potato. What we actually do is we make a potato puree, then we lighten up a little bit of whipped cream, put it inside of a vacuum chamber. It wants to inflate all the air that you worked into the whipped cream. Mm -hmm. So this will slowly build, and then when you stop the vacuum happening, this will seal and it'll maintain the height where you need it to. So then once you freeze it, it'll stay where it is, cut it up, and what it actually ends up turning into in the very end is this, oh which is God. the little potato cloud, freeze-dried Johnny that we were talking about. It's a space potato. A space potato. As you eat it, it melts back into mashed potatoes. Okay, here we go. Ah! I put it in my mouth and then it disappeared. Where did it go? It goes away. It's a space potato that is so Weird. Finally, Richie showed me what he uses to make a root beer glaze he'll pour over some succulent short ribs. It's called a roto bath. It's a cold still. So essentially, you're removing water from a liquid under pressure rather than just by boiling it up like really hard. We boil the water or evaporate it at 27 degrees Celsius, which is very, very low, able to capture volatile flavors that are only lost uh, through the boiling process. Yeah. Richie's Rotovap did the trick with the root beer glaze. It's so concentrated in flavor, it only took a couple of dots to enhance the tender beef. Now this is essentially a very straightforward dish using the innovation technology of the Rotovap to enhance the flavor of the root beer, and it's mm -hmm. kind of let it be two really good bites of food. Who would have ever thought of adding root beer to short ribs? There's only one word for it. It's so delicious. So delicious. Gulp. Sorry.